Hello and welcome to part 1 of the Marketer's Guide to Gaming Campaigns, an installment in the Gaming Marketing Made Simple series. The following builds on concepts covered in the Gaming Marketing Frequently Asked Questions module. So, please complete that before continuing. This learning content is provided by the Gaming Marketing Institute, an innovative initiative with a mission to clarify and simplify the practice of gaming marketing. The Gaming Marketing Institute is owned and operated by the Esports Group, an agency with roots in esports and gaming since 2015. Which means this, and all other, learning material is designed for, and by, practitioners. So, if you want to shape knowledge that inspires effective work, you're in the right place. The objective of this module is to shape your knowledge of the core aspects of gaming marketing. So, you can develop strategies and tactics which support effective gaming campaigns. To shape your knowledge, we will cover the following, among other things. A concise definition of gaming. How marketers can tap into game experiences. Plus, an explanation of effective gaming marketing use cases from Nike and Mountain Dew. That said, let's get started. Let's start by establishing that gameplay is the activity of playing video games. However, gaming is more than just gameplay. It is a massive ecosystem of behaviors anchored in, around, and away from gameplay. As a result, a great deal of gaming behaviors take place beyond a game's digital world. Likewise, Gaming marketing practice includes so much more than just in-game advertising. For example, the metagame is the collection of strategies, tactics, and trends that influence approach and adaptation to gameplay. Yet, the discussions about and contributions to the metagame occur beyond gameplay, on digital channels like social media. The same holds for gaming media shared and viewed on platforms like Twitch and YouTube. Gaming marketing taps into the game experiences, which encompass behaviors like the metagame and sharing gaming content content among others. To be clear, game experiences is a holistic term meant to help marketers understand gaming audiences by painting a bigger picture of the emotion, moments and systems which give meaning to games. We will detail game experiences in an upcoming learning module. But for now, it suffices to say that gaming is not a single channel, nor is it channel specific. Instead, it is an experiential context that marketers can tap into on any channel. The same way that travel is an experiential context that destination marketing taps into through channels like digital video, influencers and public relations. However, gaming's context cannot exist without gameplay. Since, if people stopped playing video games, there would be no metagame, gaming media, nor any other gaming behavior. Gaming audiences would also disappear from the previously mentioned channels, alongside the opportunity to connect with them. The same applies to the plethora of products and services which compose the gaming market. As there would be no gaming offerings, whether hardware peripherals, accessories, or in-person events, if gameplay ceased. This shared dependence on gameplay is the reason all game experiences are classified with prepositions. Since all game experiences encompass gaming behaviors that are rooted in, around or away from gameplay. The in-game experience, for instance, is defined by a player's immersion in the rules, objectives and so forth, which define gameplay. The around game experience is marked by audience interaction with gameplay outside, but around the in-game experience, such as when audiences spectate others' gameplay. The Away From Game experience is about blending gameplay elements into mainstream events, media, products, and so forth. Since we've already established that audiences experience games in a variety of ways beyond gameplay, Let's clarify that gaming marketing practice is an umbrella for the many forms of advertising and promotions, 
which tap into those game experiences to inspire action. The same way digital marketing includes multiple channels that reach online audiences, such as content, email, social media and more. As a result, gaming marketing executions can take shape as anything from in-game brand presence and advertising, around game sponsorships and activations, away from game innovations, events and more. Likewise, tapping into different game experiences entails different gaming behaviors, which take place on different channels. For instance, we previously mentioned Nike's in-game activation, which created a bespoke playable experience in Roblox. Whereas Mountain Dew's Real Change Challenge tapped into the around game esports experience at historically black colleges and universities. While Nike's Roblox activation tapped into purely virtual gameplay behaviors by way of an in-game channel, Real Change Challenge blended gameplay into a mainstream event format, albeit one which entailed collegiate gamers competing in-game while an audience spectated around gameplay, both in person and on Twitch. On the other hand, video game streaming involves a streamer sharing their in-game experience with audiences who spectate around gameplay on platforms like Twitch or YouTube. So, even though esports and video game streaming share some audience behaviors, and a similar orientation to gameplay. A hypothetical Twitch activation would nonetheless entail different channels compared to Mountain Dew's Real Change Challenge tournament. That's why it's important to clarify that a game experience does not only consist of an audience orientation to gameplay, but also the virtual and physical elements associated with its behaviors. But most importantly, game experiences define who and what is considered a part of the game. For instance, human players need some form of physical hardware to engage with the in-game experience. As a result, products like personal computers are just as integral to the playable experience as any other in-game behavior or virtual element. However, some digital games run on gaming consoles like Microsoft's Xbox, as opposed to PCs. So the in-game experience would involve different hardware components depending on the platform. Likewise, the winner of an esports tournament is often awarded a trophy, which is equally a part of that game experience. Even though it may not be relevant to another around game experience like discussions about the metagame or a video game stream on Twitch. Said differently, an Xbox console or an esports tournament trophy is symbolic of their respective game experiences, positive emotions and moments. That means they resonate with gaming audiences the same way that a football cleat and a football tournament trophy are relevant to sports audiences for example. So, moving forward, we will refer to a game experience's relevant parts as touch points, where gaming campaigns employ touch points, both virtual and physical, to shape how gaming audiences perceive marketing messages. That said, now we can also circle back to the previous definition of gaming marketing and adjust it to the activities associated with inspiring actions through relevance to game experience touch points. It's important to center touch points because they are part of game experiences which themselves are relevant to audience needs and desires. As a result, touch points are ideal messaging vehicles for breaking through to gaming audiences and inspiring action. For example, Nike's intended action for its Roblox in-game activation was for younger demographics to virtually engage with its brand. However, Nike did not have to tailor the activation for the target audience's needs and desires. Instead, by selecting an experience that is already relevant to target demographics, all Nike had to do was authentically blend into the experience's touchpoints. Now, let's recap key concepts integral to understanding gaming campaigns. First, gaming is an umbrella for behaviors which include but is not limited to the activity of playing games, otherwise known as gameplay. The concept of a game experience encompasses gaming behaviors which are rooted in, around and or away from gameplay. Also, gaming is an experiential context that marketers can tap into on any channel. 
it is not a unified audience or channel. As a result, gaming marketing practice is an umbrella for many forms of advertising and promotions, which tap into game experiences. However, as we demonstrated with Mountain Dew's Real Change Challenge Tournament, each game experience is unique, even if it shares a similar audience orientation to gameplay with other experiences. That's why different gaming campaigns tap into different channels. We also established that a game experience's relevant parts are called touch points. We use the term touch point because they symbolize positive emotions and moments relevant to a game experience. In that light, gaming campaigns tap into touch points to influence how audiences perceive marketing messages. This concludes the first part of the Marketer's Guide to Gaming Campaigns. Please check out the second part to continue your learning journey with the Gaming Marketing Institute. That way you can level up your career or business through gaming marketing. Once again, thank you and goodbye.